Hey everybody, thank you so much for clicking on this video. So, this is, this, this is a video. <laughs> I've mentioned Blogilates on this channel a number of times. The first time is actually way back when I first started making videos and I actually recommended her channel for free workouts. Wait, can we look at the thumbnail again? <laughs> also the cat, the cat, I can't. God damn, this is a terrible video, don't watch it. <laughs> More recently, a lot of you have probably seen this video where I didn't really recommend her, let's say. And most of the sentiment around Cassie has been that her old content was excellent and her new content has just changed and it's very different. And I have said the same thing until now. So a few weeks ago, I watched a video from Team for Never Lean. Harry is the content creator and he completely changed my mind about Cassie's old and new content. Let me just tell you right now, we were all wrong. So we're gonna be diving into that video. And originally when I had the idea for this video, like that was it. It was just gonna be me watching Harry's video, letting you know what I thought about it, and then like end video roll credits. Then Cassie came out with her 90 day muscle building plan for herself. And I was like, well, we have to talk about this too. So we're gonna consider this video to be like, one final look into Blogilates because honestly, I, I can't give it any more of my energy. So let's start with Harry's video. We're gonna go in, I'm just gonna show you a few like key parts that really emphasize the fact that 2014 Cassie was not any better than 2022 Cassie. But first, we have to grab a hat. If you've never seen Harry's videos, you're probably gonna be like, why? <laughs> but I thought this hat is perfect because it's ridiculous. So this is a banana streaking. What do we think? Do we like it? I don't know if I'm gonna wear this whole video. Okay, let's jump in. Let's jump into the first little chunk that I want you to see with Harry. People will come to say, you know what, I actually really used to like Global Artists and their content a few years ago, but recently it's really gone down the pan. So I said, that's really interesting because I had only seen her recent content, so perhaps maybe her older content was much better. And I'm sure some of it was. As you know, I can never look at every video, but I have seen a few and I looked at her more popular videos and a few did jump out to me that were again, not as great as I was expecting. So in that first little chunk, he basically just says what I already told you, that Cassie's old content doesn't really live up to the hype that we've all been saying. And we're gonna see that in just a second, but let me, I just wanna like let you know that 25 year old Justina was everything Blogilates, like workouts, nutrition advice, diet advice. I listen to Cassie because she had millions of subscribers. As we know, some of her more recent content is very much content like this, in which she gives these kind of variations of known bodyweight movements that maybe aren't ideal or optimal. So here she's obviously talking about push-up variation. So if you're looking at kind of targeting your muscle, maybe let's say you're considering hypertrophy, you want to try and lengthen and shorten that muscle as effectively as possible. And when you're doing a push-up variation that ultimately limits your range of motion by essentially doing like a, a pulse, like a half push, that would be a considered a full ROM. Whereas now she's encouraging half ROM, it's not ever going to the lockout portion, which is essentially the peak contraction of the tricep. Which... Okay, so there's a lot to unpack here, but I've said it time and time again. There there aren't necessarily bad exercises. It just comes down to how efficient something is. So if you're doing like pulse reps or half reps of something, you're just limiting the range of motion of a muscle and you're not getting as much bang for your buck. If you think about it really simplistically, you don't have hours and hours and hours every single day to put in exercise or movement, most likely, right? Most of us live pretty hectic, busy lives. Even my life is fitness and I still have a hard time carving out more than three or four days a week to focus on my own workouts. So when you do actually carve out that time, don't you wanna pick the thing that is the most efficient for you? I hope the answer is yes. <laughs> and unfortunately, most of the exercises that Cassie promotes are just inefficient. Now, on the flip side, if you enjoy doing exercises like this and your main goal is just to move more and enjoy movement, go ahead and go for it. I always say the most important thing is that you're enjoying what you're doing because if you do not enjoy it, you will not stick to it. And consistency is key. And that's where I think there's a bit of a misunderstanding of just because you're hurting, it doesn't mean you're working. Okay, and this is the other important part that Harry points out. Feel does not equal function. Just because you feel burning in an area does not necessarily mean that you are training that area or in the most efficient way. For instance, in this video right here, Cassie talks about how this exercise is gonna target the shoulders, 
chest and biceps. Well, even though like the chest and the biceps might pop in to help stabilize, this isn't a chest or bicep exercise. Like we can say that this is shoulders for sure, but once again, we're not really optimizing the full range of motion, so it's not super efficient. And yeah, if you hold your arms like that for a really long time, you're gonna feel burning, but again, is it efficient? The answer is no. Let's flip back to some of the older stuff. Let's go back to 2014. And it's the fact that even things like this were being promoted in which she's promoting a natural belly slimming detox water recipe. Is that really content that should be promoted? A lot of people are saying, oh, her old content is much better. Is this much better? When I see things like these detox water recipes or anything along those lines, immediately I'm thinking, this is a concern. I have to tell you, when I was watching this video and he pulled up that old video, I my jaw hit the floor for two reasons. Number one, I literally commented on one of his old videos about Blogilates that her old content was much better. This is not much better. <laughs> Number two, I had like, okay, you know when you have a, like all of a sudden a memory is activated and you're like, ooh, I did that. I literally made that. I literally made that recipe thinking that it was going to give me a really flat stomach. Uh, it obviously didn't. <laughs> and I think this is the point of why I wanted to talk about this because that was not a red flag for me back in 2014. 25 year old Justina went, this, this is definitely gonna work. This is a great idea because Blogilati said it and she has millions of followers. So if she said it, then it's gonna work for me. And I think that it shows you that diet culture is so pervasive with influencers, with the media, probably with the government. And look, I don't necessarily blame Cassie for this because she was in it too. And we know from other videos of hers that like she has struggled a lot with her own health journey. But the point of this is to say that her old content is not better than the content she has now. Also, I don't think I need to say it, but just in case this is like the first video you've clicked on of mine, you do not need some kind of detox tea. The only thing that you need to detox your body is a functioning liver and kidneys. So just, just so you know that. I know in this video in 2018, Cassie speaks about how she didn't eat for three days because she went on a juice cleanse following a, a holiday. Whether the cleanse was intentional, whether the cleanse was an experiment, whether the cleanse was to prove it doesn't work. Again, it's the promotion of something I don't feel necessarily should be promoted. So not only is the title concerning, I do understand it's clickbait, and again, I do understand why it's done. A lot of people would take that at face value and say, you know what, Blogal Artists didn't eat for three days. Maybe maybe I could not eat for three days. And I think that that is quite a concern. That right there is so important. This is something that I am also learning right now, and I think that it needs to be shared. Even if you try something and talk about it and give very specific details of how you did it and then end it with, but I don't recommend you do it. You are still putting that idea in someone's head. A few weeks ago, I made a very obviously satirical TikTok that was like things I used to do because I wanted to be as skinny as possible. And it gave out specific numbers, it gave out specific things I used to do, and it was obviously a joke. But what I didn't realize is that with people suffering or recovering from an eating disorder, that can put ideas in people's heads. You know, I, I kind of struggled understanding this, like going back and forth, I'm like, it's obviously a joke, da 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 da. But after reaching out to a friend of mine who is like a liaison for NIDA, the National Eating Disorder Association. She explained to me exactly why that is not the best route to go about things, and it can be a little insensitive. And again, I'm always learning I'm not perfect. I took the video down and I like did make another video just explaining why, you know, everything I'm explaining now. And I think actually the thing that really stood out to me was when I was talking to one of my personal training clients about it later that day. She had a lot of the same experiences that I did growing up. She grew up in pageants, I grew up dancing. And even though she was not offended by the video, she did say to me, she was like, you know, I remember being in health class and watching a video about like, you shouldn't eat food and then throw it up, that's bad for you. And she was like, I didn't even know that was an option until I saw it. And then in my head I went, oh, maybe that's a good way to lose weight. So even though on surface level you might go, yeah, of course these things are not smart and they're not good for you, they can still really affect people. So I think that that is something that applies to this video that just says, I didn't eat for three days. Some young girl might look at this and go, okay, whether it worked for Cassie or not, maybe it can work for me. By having this restrictive fasting in your brain, that can lead to a lot of really disordered eating patterns and thoughts around food. I actually thought that the juice cleanse was gonna have a negative effect on me. I thought that I would hate it, that it wouldn't be good for me at all. So I'm really surprised 
that it worked. If she does go on to say, you know, it worked for me, it doesn't mean it works for you, which I do always appreciate when people do clarify, like, this is just me, doesn't need to be applied to you. But unfortunately, a lot of people will apply for themselves. Yeah, Harry's a lot nicer about this than I am. This is fucking irresponsible. Like, he, he goes into science about it and all of this stuff. Fuck the science. <laughs> This is messed up. She just shouldn't have posted that video. I don't care how many times you say, disclaimer, this worked for me, it might not work for you. Not eating for three days, like unless you are under medical supervision, no, stop. And if it is something you're doing under medical supervision, you don't need to be telling the word, world about it because it's just going to feed into these terrible, terrible ideas that young girls have about how to manipulate their body. So I think it just comes down to like responsibility for your words and actions when you have such a large platform. I'm glad that by 2018, I had kind of figured my shit out and I didn't see this. We're gonna look at six men to sexy arms, which has nearly 12 million views and was posted in 2014. So again, her older content, which in theory should be better than a lot of the more recent content I've seen. Circle. Circle. Just like that. Now, I want you to go figure it. Nice and strong. As fast as you can. In all honesty, this doesn't really look particularly different to the workouts I have already seen of Cassie. Um, yeah, and that's just because they're not different. <laughs> but I think that this is actually where Harry and I differ a little bit. Even though I do encourage people to pick the most efficient training methods and efficient exercises for you, and my mindset on that has shifted a lot from previous videos. <laughs> Pevolve. At the end of the day, if you enjoy something and you can stay consistent with it, that's what you should be doing. Seriously, because if it's not the most efficient path for you, but you stick with it and you're consistent, that's gonna get you better results. Whatever the results are that you're looking for, maybe it's just to stick with movement, that's gonna get you better results than the thing you don't like doing. And if this is how you enjoy movement, that is fantastic. Now what I do have an issue with is her pivot especially on TikTok, where she now has the approach of just reinventing basic functional anatomy and also just getting very aggressive toward anybody who calls her out on it. Okay, so we're gonna say goodbye to Harry from here and we're going to jump into the more recent endeavor that Cassie has, which is her 90 day journey to muscle. Okay, Harry, the hat was fun. We're taking it off. All right, I actually think I look better with the hat. First and foremost, I am so thrilled that Cassie is working toward this goal and that she is also talking about the benefits of muscle from more than just an aesthetic standpoint. It is vital for your bone health. It is vital to prevent injury, to protect your organs. You know, the list just goes on and on. But we're gonna kind of jump into all of the stuff that she has presented us with so far on this journey. Uh, we're gonna start with her Instagram post announcing it. And I wanna break it down piece by piece because there's some execution things that I don't really understand how they support her why. Okay. So she talks about on her birthday and the 10 year anniversary of her bikini competition, she's choosing to do something selfish for her and only her. She's going on a new 90 day journey to muscle. So the point here is that she wants to build muscle in 90 days and she is just doing this for her. She's not doing it for her community. She's not doing it for views. She is just doing it to build muscle. Instead of training for a bikini and the judgment of others, I'm gonna train for strength and the judgment of myself. Love that. My why, ooh, you know I love a good why. To rectify my unhealthy past and get in the strongest shape of my life on my terms. I love that. It's twofold, right? She's trying to get stronger through building muscle. And then she wants to undo a lot of the things that quite honestly fucked her up doing a bikini building competition. Bikini building, muscle bodybuilding, bikini competition. Those are all three different things. So in previous posts, she had talked about how she was under eating and her calories. She was over training. To me, by looking at this, it tells me that she wants to build something that is very sustainable and healthy and supports her long-term health and build muscle doing it. I love that. My how, physically. I. Oh, and I love this, like physically, mentally, emo like those are great pillars. Physically, I will focus on doing workouts and eating meals that will help me gain muscle and get stronger. I wrote up my entire workout plan and meal plan on blogglotties.com for my own accountability. So I love this. She's gonna focus on doing workouts and eating meals that will help her gain muscle and get stronger. So just picking that apart, she's gonna be doing workouts that get her stronger, 
muscle growth. So working for hypertrophy, love that. She's probably gonna be doing some kind of split, I'm assuming, but also that's kind of a like bodybuilder kind of format. And if that's what she was doing with her coach before, maybe that's not the best route to go back to. I have a whole video about workout splits and the best workout split is the one that works for you. So if going back to that traditional like back and buys, lower body push, like all of that kind of stuff is triggering to her, then hopefully she has figured out another way to format her workouts. I'm eating meals that will help me gain muscle and get stronger. So she's gonna be at least at maintenance, if not a caloric bulk. If you are trying to put on muscle, you need calories. Like that's just what it is. It is incredibly difficult to be in a caloric deficit and actually build muscle because you just, you don't really have anything to build. If you're at maintenance, you can do it. It's just, it is difficult and it's probably going to take you more time. This is where things start to go skew for me. So she wrote out her entire workout plan and her entire meal plan on blogilates.com for her own accountability. Okay. If we go back up. This is for her, she says, but now you're putting the whole thing online. I have two issues with this. Number one, if it's just for you, I understand you need accountability, but in that case, hire a coach because now it's not really about you. It's about public appearance and sharing with people. And it's fine if you want to post every day, like did my workout. It was great. I, I did these kind of exercises. I'm going to report back like at the end, da, 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 like whatever. But it's another thing to write it out piece by piece because, well, now you know people are going to follow it. And now it's not just for you. And also, I mean, I haven't, well, we haven't looked at the details yet, but it's like, does someone need to be following your exact meal plan? No. Mentally, I'm going to be focusing on sleeping more to decrease my stress levels, promote muscle growth. A plus love that. Sleep is very undervalued with myself included. Emotionally, I'm going to journal daily, allow myself the freedom to fail, tweak, and try again. Love that. And this is another reason why I don't think she should be posting details on her website. She already admits like she's going to have to tweak it. So why are you going to put out details of something if you just know you're going to have to tweak it? Let's go to her website. My microphone is dying, so I hooked it onto my water cup and plugged it in. I don't know why I sound like ASMR all of a sudden. Okay. Okay, so let's go to her 90-day journey. <laughs> ready to take the journey. I'm ready. It looks like she wants to sell this at some point. I did kind of mess up here, but it does make sense still, and I'm going to keep this part in. So what I'm looking at is actually very unclear, but this was a previous 90-day journey, which was for fat loss, I think. I'll double check that. And... It kind of seems like though she's doing the same thing. Like she's doing this 90 day muscle growth journey for herself, but then she's probably just gonna sell it again. Like, I mean, that's what the format is leading to, right? Hopefully the future will prove me wrong, but we're gonna talk about this more in the video. This is supposed to be just for her. And everything that she's doing looks like the thing she did before and the thing she's doing now is just to make money. Remember guys, it is illegal for somebody in the US and I learned in the UK to sell a meal plan if you are not a registered dietitian. But Cassie has worked with an RD, Brianna Woods, to create my ultimate 90 day meal plan. I've talked about this before. I, whether you are working with an RD or someone doing it illegally, I'm not a big fan of meal plans because I don't think that they really teach you how to make sustainable choices long term. I don't think they teach you how to make choices for when you're not feeling what's on the meal plan or for when you don't have an ingredient. So I'm not a fan regardless, unless you have some kind of autoimmune disease or, or something that you're working around that an RD like really thinks is um, worth doing. So you choose from one of the following plans. Oh, okay, okay. So here we go. This is just for her. It's not for anyone else, unless you pay her $29. <laughs> Let's talk about the blog. So she does share her starting statistics. Personally, I'm not a big fan of people sharing their stats simply because it creates a lot of room for comparison. And young girls looking up to Cassie might go, oh, Cassie weighs X amount, I should weigh X amount. And then they take X, Y, and Z, maybe they don't eat for three days to try and weigh that much. I'm not a big fan, I just don't see how it's helpful for people to know those numbers. So that's why I'm not into it. Now I do like that she goes on to say, it's not about weight loss, it's about muscle gain. I do think that's really important and I appreciate that she said that. I'm not even concerned about my total weight at all, especially since muscle weighs more than fat. Mm, muscle doesn't weigh more than fat. A pound of muscle 
weighs the same as a pound of fat. But muscle is much more densely packed than fat, so muscle will just take up less room on your body, but it weighs exactly the same. It's like a pound of feathers and a pound of wood weighs the same, it's a pound. I do not have a body fat percentage goal, but I do plan on seeing a lower fat tissue number given the workouts that I will be doing and the food I will be eating. Additionally, the lower fat the lower the fat percentage, the more muscle definition that can be seen. So this is again a place where I'm a little confused because now she's talking about fat loss. When I thought that the goal was muscle gain because that is a, that's a form of body recomposition and it's very difficult to do, especially if you are not like brand new to training. What it is starting to sound like Cassie is expecting is actually a fat loss goal, which will reveal the muscle underneath. And again, it's not, it's not impossible, but it's really difficult, especially she is someone who has been in this industry and, and working in fitness and doing workouts for a very long time. So it's very difficult if you are more advanced. Let's start with her split. Quads, glutes, abs, shoulders, biceps, strength, cardio. Okay, so it's interesting. This is a very like typical, it seems like it's like lower body push, upper body period, cardio, lower body pull, another upper body. So it's more like upper body and and then like arms and then glutes calves, my calves. Okay, and then a rest. Um, a few things here. Number one, if she's trying to get away from the way that she trained before, I would have recommended doing a little bit different split. I actually would have looked at this more as training movement patterns rather than muscle groups. That's actually how I was just saying it. Like instead of training muscles, I would train movement patterns. So I would have just structured this a little bit more like lower body push, upper body pull, cardio, lower body pull, upper body push, and then I would have done like a full body day or rest. Another red flag, why are we training the abs so much? Why do we have abs on every single day? Guys, your abs is one muscle of your core and it, doing a bunch of like crunches and sit-ups is not, it, it's, it's just, it's silly. It's again, it's like not very efficient. Now she wants to train her core in all of these. I think that's great. But also a lot of the things that she's already doing will naturally train your core. Compound lifts are going to train your core better than a crunch ever can. I think that's just a little bit of misunderstanding and lack of education. I don't really know why calves are in here. Maybe because she's running so much, which let's talk about that next. Guys, her goal again is muscle growth. She is starting every strength workout with a 30 minute run. Oh. <laughs> Look, if you wanna run every day, go for it. But if your goal is muscle growth, do it after your workouts. Because if you run for 30 minutes, that is going to take down so much of your energy that you could be giving to the rest of your work. And the rest of your work is the important part, right? I don't know why she's running so much. Maybe it is from enjoyment. And again, enjoyment is the most important thing. But like, this is... This is a lot of running, especially again, when your goal is muscle growth. And then when we get into the workouts, personally, I just think the volume is a lot here in a few different ways. Number one, we have so many exercises, like so many exercises and so many compound exercises, sumo squats, then into Bulgarian split squats, then into barbell back squats, then into back lunges, then into glute bridges, and then front lunge, like, oh my, God, also my knees, oh, dead. I wouldn't be able to walk the next day. It's just, it's too many exercises. If you're training for muscle growth, pick like, I don't know, I'm gonna just pick rent, like five exercises. That's great. You'll be fine. Especially if you're doing all of these, like six days of workouts. One, two, three, four, five, six, seven, eight, nine. Like you don't need nine exercises. And then I think her rep range is a little, her sets and reps are just a little high, especially for just jumping in. Traditionally, if you're working for hypertrophy or muscle growth, it's always said like six to 12 rep range is ideal. There have been studies in more recent years that you can still get muscle growth at a higher uh, rep range. But if we're looking at the volume of her training, I don't know why she needs so many reps. You know what I'm saying? Like you're already getting so much in. So if you want a lot of exercises, I guess take down the reps. I just, I think like the volume overall is just way too much. And I say this because number one, she's trying to avoid the overtraining that she did before. Remember healing that unhealthy relationship. And number two, this isn't sustainable. Like even if you did do this for 90 days, at the end of 90 days, I would never want to go in the gym again. Like this isn't this isn't training your body to heal the unhealthy relationship that you have built with with strength training. This is like beating your body. Oh my god. I think that's kind of twofold. Like 
this plan to me looks more like a fat loss protocol because it doesn't seem like you could really do very heavy like all of these exercises. You'd have to drop weight to get that many reps in, which also that many reps is going to like really elevate your heart rate. I don't see any rest times indicated, so I don't I don't know what she's doing there. So it seems more like it's a fat loss protocol than anything else. Let's go down and talk about the food. So again, she worked with an RD. I love that she talks so much about protein again. Her RD recommends about a gram of protein per pound of body weight for those looking to build muscle. I think that this is a little reductive. I don't really like this method. There's a lot of, especially if you're working with a personalized RD, there's a lot more specific and relevant ways that you can go about calculating that number. So she's gonna start at around 150 at 1500 calories a day. The woman was too stunned to speak. Okay, I'm having a mental breakdown because of that calorie number. So let's rewind and talk about her goal. Her goal is to build muscle. To build muscle, you at least need to be at maintenance, if not in a caloric surplus. So at first glance, 1500 calories a day for someone who is 122 pounds, who is taller than me, <laughs> I'm like five feet tall, is an adult woman and who is active, like she's a fitness professional. I'm telling you right now, unless she has severe metabolic damage, 1500 calories is not maintenance or a bulk. That is a cut. I, I just, it's so irresponsible and so misinformed. And also let's go back like, so if this is actually, let's just say this is maintenance for her, right? Meaning if she ate 1500 calories a day, she would not gain or lose fat or weight. Honestly, if I were her RD, I'd be like, yo girl, maybe let's like break on the muscle building goal and let's just get your metabolism back up to a nice, healthy, sustainable number so that you don't have to be eating so little during the day. It's just not, it's so little. So I'm like kind of flabbergasted. As far as the actual meals, it looks like she's into the five small meals a day, personal preference. I say this to everyone, it's like what, whatever works for you, right? 15, 20, my God, it's just so low. And then she does go on to say like, this is my personal meal plan for me based off of da 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 da, -da. You shouldn't find, follow this blindly without concern. So why post it? Why post it? And also, you're selling it. You're literally selling it to people. Now I'm getting heated because like, sure, she gave us a, a little snippet of what she's gonna eat. By the way, this is every day for a week. That sounds terrible. If I ate every single meal exactly the same for a week, I would never wanna eat that food again. Again, we're talking about sustainability. When I think about all of this meal prepping, of I'm eating the same thing every day, that brings to me to like a bodybuilding competition. And that's what she's trying to get away from. And I am spiraling. <laughs> okay, we're back. We've taken a moment, we've taken a breath, we're putting our mic back in the appropriate place. <sighs> okay, let, let me tell you where my thoughts are with this. Option one of what is happening. Cassie has severely messed up her BMR or her basal metabolic rate to a point where 1500 calories is actually a bulk for her, which again, I think that her RD should be telling her like, this isn't the best goal for you right now. Let's reverse diet you back up to a nice sustainable maintenance so that you don't feel deprived. That's option one. Option two is what I think is actually happening. I don't think that Cassie has any desire to build muscle. I think that she wants to lose fat. She wants to lose fat to show the muscle underneath. Everything about this program, which is low calorie and high reps with lots of cardio, that is a fat loss program. That's what it is. And guys, there's nothing wrong with fat loss. Absolutely not. But don't market it as muscle building. Give us the step-by-step -step of how to do it. It just, look, she's either lying to you or she's just terribly misinformed. And I don't know which one it is at this point. And let me tell you this, as somebody who has struggled a lot in her 20s with food and nutrition and workouts and, and just her overall body image, this isn't okay. And I do really feel for Cassie. If like she is being truthful and she actually thinks that this is what's gonna heal her relationship with all of that disordered mindset from doing this bikini competition, I feel really bad for her. But if you have the world screaming at you, this isn't right, this isn't backed by science, you're causing damage, 
you listen. When someone calls me out, I do my research. I reach out to professionals. And then from there, I take responsibility. And I do my best to understand why I'm wrong. But instead, all Cassie decides to do is point at educated people and tell them they're haters. And she just makes herself the victim. When really all she's doing is making her audience a victim to diet culture over and over and over again. Like I said, this will be the last time that I discuss her because I don't wanna give her any more of my energy. If she is struggling, I feel for her and I hope that she can heal all of her relationships with her body and food and workouts and all of that. But it is, it's, it's her job to figure it out and she needs to stop utilizing her audience to try and do that. Let me know what you guys think. We're gonna, we're gonna end with the hat because I got really heated. There we go, that makes me happy. Let me know what you guys think. This is really tricky. It's not an easy subject to talk about. And the last thing that I'm trying to do is spew hate towards someone and that's not my goal. My goal is to raise awareness so that you also do not try a detox drink for an entire week and then wonder why your belly isn't flat. Anyway, hit that subscribe button. Let me know what you think down in the comments below and I'll see you in the next one. Oh boy.